I think I've died and gone to heaven. Welcome to Sweden. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Riederholm, Sweden, to visit Magnus Almquist and look in at what he's been up to. Now, Magnus runs a small company called Motor Ema, and he specializes in the restoration and recreation of some of the finest race cars ever built. I'm always amazed at the quality of Swedish craftsmanship, but the work that Magnus does is absolutely beyond belief, and I consider him the best of the best. You simply will not believe your eyes. So let's just get right down to it. Magnus, good morning. Good morning. So good Magnus. to finally meet you. I've, I've heard about you and your work for some time, and I'm, I'm finally here in Sweden. Uh, hey, welcome. <laughs> it's great to be here. And this is an interesting place, because of course you have your shop here, Motorima. But across the street is your, your dad's museum. Yes. And that's kind of how you got involved in cars to begin with, right? Tell me about that, because this is one of the more interesting museums I've ever seen. And it's not a, just a car museum. There's great cars in there. Some, you know, mm. I mean, there's Rolls, Bentley, and then a great variety of race cars and mm. things. But then you, you go to the next area, and there's motorcycles and mopeds and bicycles. Then you go to the next area, <laughs> and there's old radios and musical instruments. Grocery shops. Yeah, there's just everything there. Yes. It's, it's, it's a very, I, I, what we would say, eclectic collection. So he, he is quite a collector. And you, and you have your own collection of some very significant cars, some very significant formula cars. You, got, you have Ronnie Peterson's F1 car. Yes. One of the she, great Swedish yes, drivers. Yes, our drivers. greatest. And then also that beautiful Cooper. Yeah, an old Graham Hill Formula 2 cars from 1964. So these are, these are significant cars. Yes, yes. But, but you, you were interested in restoring and creating. I was fascinated about this old craftsmanship to create specific the bodies mm -hmm. with very simple tools, sandbags and hammers and... So that's how you started, the, the classic sandbag <clears throat> hammer? Yes, yes. I also started building pedal cars. Uh-huh. You built quite a few. Yes, uh, actually 165 cars and, and they all all over, over the world. world. You certainly progressed to much larger cars and you really started in restoration before you got to recreation. Yes, I have restored lots of cars. Uh, in the beginning, it was mostly veteran cars before the world mm -hmm. war, and uh, but mo nowadays it's more and more sports and racing cars and uh, mostly Italian cars. You you amaze me. So let's talk Thank about you. one that you've created. This is an absolutely spectacular car. This is a 1950 Alfa Romeo Disco Volante, right? Yes, that's correct. Now this was a purpose-built race car. Yes, it was very early aerodynamic thinking. Mm -hmm. So it was built for racing and this is how they thought it should be. And they made how many of these? Only two cars. One open and one coupe with a small roof. But in the first testing it showed that uh, it created lift. Too much lift. Yes. So well, the career was very short. <laughs> <laughs> well actually uh, Disco Volante, I mean in Italian that's flying saucer, right? Yes. So it was trying to take off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so were the originals destroyed or do they still exist? No, they still exist and they are still at the factory museum. So you almost never see them yeah. out. To be honest, it's not absolutely exact, but it doesn't have to be because... It's yours. It, yes. And uh, the feeling and the appearance of it, it's really close to the... It is the spirit of the Disco Volante. Yes. With the Magnus touch. Yes. 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 That's correct. Well, stunningly beautiful car. But I, I almost... And, you know, I mean, the front's gorgeous and everything. But I actually believe it's the rear end of this car that is the best part of it. Yes, absolutely. That's really spectacular. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite like that. And when you get down and look at it, you really do see it looks like a flying saucer. Yes, that's the whole idea, the elliptical. And it should, uh, you say it's also quite high under. Yeah, it is. So it should flow through the air, but uh, yeah. It, it wanted it's, to fly into the yeah, air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now how about the, the dash, Magnus? Would this have been what the original Disco Volante dash looked like? In the yeah, instruments? yes, it's really, really close. And there's an interesting story about the instruments. I know a small company just outside uh, Venezia. Mm -hmm an old man restoring instruments from oh. when I restore cars. And I told him I should build the Disco Volante and I needed this, this was very specific for this car. And uh, I asked him if he could build me 
some of us and he said, okay, no problem, because it was me who built the original ones <laughs> in the well, 50s. Well, that's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> he should definitely was, know how to do it. Yes. What, what luck. Yeah. yeah. It's very down to business, That's very all, basic. All business, yes, right. Yes. And speaking of business, what is the business end of it? What is the power plant for this car? It's a very nice straight six cylinder twin overhead camshafts. 2.6 liter 2.6, let's mm. have a look at it. Okay. There she is. Now, you said uh, 2.6 liter. Yes. That looks awfully large for a 2.6. Yeah, it's maybe because the car is quite small also. <laughs> <laughs> Takes up a lot of space. Yes. Uh, al aluminum or? Yes, yeah. all aluminum. Wow. Dual overhead Inch. cam, inline six, Triple. three Webers. Yes. These aren't just models. These all run. Yes, it's legal for the road and it runs wow. nice. And you have fabulous roads here. Just incredible. Yes, roads. yeah, I will show you. It's legal, so will you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll take it out, do a little bit of driving with it, and you wouldn't mind if I drove it just a little bit, would you? Oh, let me think about okay, it. Okay, well, you, you start thinking, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> close, close it back up, Magnus. <laughs> okay, here we go. So push, the, push in, yes. turn on, push the button. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. Okay, here we go. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> what a sound, though. But but let's jump over to another. Again, Magnus Recreation. This yes. is a, a Fiat Abarth Special, right? Also yes. 1950? Yes. Why did you choose to 
to kind of create, recreate this. Of course, I like all those small Italian cars and they were built by small companies, almost like mine, Motorima. Mm -hmm. They used parts and built specials and tried to go racing. And uh, so it's a little on my spirit also. Yeah. yeah. This is a hot rod, really. You, yeah. you got parts that worked and you put them together and you made them go fast. Yes, Italian hot rod. An Italian mm -hmm. hot rod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and this one is another, you know, creation of yours. But it amazes me, I mean, this would take me a lifetime, actually, It'd probably take me two or three lifetimes. But how long does it take you to fabricate something like this? Maybe it's uh, a little over 1,000 hours. Which is it's just amazing to me. But you were saying this used a, uh, certainly a Fiat engine, but also a standard Fiat frame. Yes, right? yes. Because that looks like just a regular car frame. Yes, it's very light and uh, quite rigid, so. But same, you know, instrumentation, was that, you it's, know, production uh, instrumentation too? Yes, yes, it's more simpler here. They uh -huh. took what they found, so. Uh, but mm. I love how, I mean, here's your linkage. I mean, you get mm. a shift, but that's the linkage right there. Yes. I mean, every, you can see it all, I mean, your handbrake. Yeah. I love the styling of all these Italian cars, two little pea shooter exhausts. But I think, again, it's the rear end of your cars that just looks so good. Yes. Uh, Sometimes says, lots of the cars I've built are nicest from, <laughs> from behind. <laughs> nice rear end. <laughs> I love it. So, so some of these Fiats were powered by like little 500cc engines? Yes, there was uh, two different classes, up to 500 and this is uh, 1100. So this was the big block. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have it. There she is. And that's, uh, hmm. So that, that's all of it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this is almost like a Model T engine or, or something that, that it was the standard and you'd soup it up from there, you'd, you'd tune it. Yes, this was the most popular engine and it's quite modern. It comes from before the war. And you saw, but it still has overhead valves yes, and everything. Yes, and uh, aluminum uh -huh. head and uh, of course all this is tuning parts. So dual Solex, and, mm. but, but they would just take this basic thing and, and tune it as far as they could. Yes, this was uh, Italian's Ford engine. Yeah. Mm. Well, it, it is, you know, I mean, 1100 cc's probably puts out uh, 60 yeah. horsepower. Yes, something even like that. Even tuned 60 horsepower. Yes, yes. But the car can't weigh much. No, it's uh, 450 kilos. So, 800, about 900 pounds, mm. uh, under 1,000 pounds, or right around there. I bet it's a lot of fun. Should we try it? Oh, let's. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I made it back in one piece with Disco Volante. You trust me on this? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Put that hood back on. <laughs> This is a completely different car. Yes. <laughs> it is not nearly the handful that the other one is. Much easier. Much easier. And you don't actually have to be going all that fast to feel like you're going fast oh. in this car. But it still makes lots of noise. And it's yeah. fun to drive. And you can feel the ground. With your hand, actually. Yes. <laughs> now, did they race these in Sweden, or was this more of an Italian thing? It's an Italian thing. There has never been a car like this in Sweden. They didn't know what they were missing. This is fun. Yes. <laughs> Now, have you ever raced this in any vintage races or not? No, not yet. We are planning to uh, do some uh, road events in the future. There was a whole series built around these kind of cars? <clears throat> yes. Uh, road races like Milimigia. Lots of hours, Italian specials, you can call them. This would be a fun series to race in because these are these are fun little cars. Yes. In the uh, disco, you saw the fenders. Here you see the wheels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Were the fenders from anything else when they were building these, or were they fabricated just for this purpose, the bicycle yeah. fenders? Yes, I have fabricated them. Do you do the upholstery too? Do you do the interior stitching and everything? Yes, I do. I have an old sewing machine. And in this car, 
I've used all the lever, as you can see. You've been stitching it all up yourself. Yes. And this windscreen takes the air over you also. Yeah, it? but uh, a lot different on this side. <laughs> it's pretty good over here, yes. actually, Magnus. <laughs> You're a talented man, Magnus. A very talented man. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.